Hello, hello. Welcome to this new episode of Dear Cheekies. Welcome to all my new listeners and viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am excited to get into this episode and answer all of your questions. So let's get started with Yaneli. Hi, Cheeky. So I just want to make this quick and short. So I've been dating this guy for five years. We actually complete five years, August 1st. And we, we've been having a lot of issues, right, as far as family issues. Um, one is that, you know, his parents and siblings are very, very, very into our relationship. And I just don't like that. I would appreciate privacy. Um, but he doesn't see it that way. He sees it as I'm attacking his family. I wish I could give you an example, but I don't have a lot of time. So, you know, lately what I've been hearing is like from him, every time I, you know, talk to him about, you know, what's bothering me, he says, you know, my mom goes first. No woman will ever go before my mom. And I understand that, but he doesn't see like what specifically I'm talking about. You know, he feels like I'm attacking his mom and I'm not. I'm really not. And I know that, you know, his mom is really important to him, but we're going to complete five years. And he's just always talking about his mom. And then his mom is also like, I go first, I go first. And it's just like, I feel weird. Like, I feel like she's competing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say that. But like, I'm not attacking his family. I just want us to be private. I just want it to just be about us. I don't want his family in our business. And when I tell his family to please respect our space and our business, um, they don't respect it and they take it the wrong way. What should I do? Ooh, Yaneli, it sounds like you have a mama's boy on your hands. Um, very thin line here because family is family. And I am like that as well, where it's like, especially with my siblings, I'm very overprotective. And it's kind of like when I started dating Emilio, for instance, I told him, hey, my little brother lives with me. He's like my son. I don't want to hear it. I just set the foundation from the very beginning. But then as I started getting into the relationship, I realized, you know what? I have to give my partner his place. Not that he ever complained about Johnny, but I also needed to understand that, you know, Johnny's going to move out one day and do his thing. And I have to really take care of and cater to this relationship if this is a person I want in my life for the rest of my life. So with that being said, uh, I do think that mothers are very sacred. So I wouldn't go there. I would just kind of let it be and tell him over and over until he listens, hopefully hey, I want this relationship to be private. I want it to be ours. You and I, not anyone else, no third party because it will cause issues. And he loves his mom. He's a mama's boy. So that's something that is going to be very difficult for you to, I guess, I don't even know what the word is, to beat, you know, quote unquote. But there's really no competition because that's his mom. That's who gave him birth. So it's it's a very, very thin line. I think you're going to have to come to a decision of, is, is if this is the person that you want to be with, then you're just going to have to accept him for who he is and just have him please respect that you don't want anyone else's opinion in the relationship. And the mom also has to like get it together. I mean, if she wants her son to be happy, it's not like, oh, I come first and it's me, 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 me. Like, lady, you need to let your son fly and become a man. So that's a whole other conversation, but it is a very thin line. So I think have another conversation with him and tell him, if not, you're going to have to like come to a decision if you want to stay in this relationship or not. Because if it's been five years, girl, and it hasn't gotten better, I don't know if it will. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but something that you have to start thinking about. Do you want another five years, another 10 years, and then you're still in the same situation? You have to really see what you want, what's going to make you happy. Put it on a balance, babe. I hope that helped. And I hope it gets better. Thank you, Yaneli. Okay, guys. Next question comes from Paloma. Hi, Chiquis. I really love you. I follow you on every platform. Um, estaba preguntando porque yo, yo lo que he notado en cada trabajo siempre tengo una coworker que me tiende envidia. Que me tratan de correr, me quieren sacar, me quieren meter en trouble. Si yo quisiera tener un consejo tuyo, un opinión, ¿qué hago con esa gente? I try to ignore them, pero a veces, like, they try to get under your skin. Y eso es lo que a mí me choca. ¿Qué consejo usted me da? Te quiero mucho. Que Dios te bendiga. 
Okay, Palomita. Um, okay, so Paloma was saying that she needs some advice because it seems to be that every job that she has, there is always a coworker that is either trying to get her fired or picks fights with her, and she tries to ignore them, but it just frustrates her, which I, I get. So she's asking for advice as to what I think she should do. Well, first of all, Palomita, siento que es importante que veas y pienses qué estoy haciendo yo para traer esto porque si sigue pasando es porque uno está trayendo ese esa situación ese problema así que eso siento que es importante solamente tú vas a saber yo obviamente no te conozco personalmente así que no te puedo decir pero hay que ver eso lo mejor es ignorar yo sé que es imposible pero tiene que llegar un punto cuando tú estés sabes qué me vale madres, yo vengo a trabajar, voy a hacer lo mío y no me puedo enfocar en lo que diga la gente o no. O sea, si tú estás haciendo tu trabajo, no te pueden correr. Si tú estás haciendo lo que tú tienes que hacer, no te van a correr. O sea, si te están pica y pica y te molesta y ellos ven que te molesta eso, van a seguir chingando. You know, so it's better y es mejor que los ignores y que tú vayas oídos sordos y tú enfocada. Porque siempre en la vida, no importa dónde vayas, siempre va a haber alguien que va a estar picando la cresta. No más porque les gusta verte enojada. Believe me. Yo sé lo que te digo, así que ignorar. Yo sé que es súper difícil, pero medita. Cada que, que entres al trabajo y, sa y di, ¿sabes qué? Yo voy a estar bien. Yo me voy a enfocar. Yo voy a estar en lo mío. Respira profundamente y que se te resbale. A chingar a su madre esas... Cosas negativas, okay? Okay, so I'm going to try to do this quickly in English now. So what I told Paloma was that she needs to first really do a heart check and figure out what it is that she's doing to attract these situations. Because if we continue with certain problems and situations in our lives, it's because we are attracting them in one way or another. So I told her, try to see what that is so that you can prevent this from happening. And also, as hard as it is, She needs to really just continue ignoring these people and just stay focused, try not to listen, go into work and take deep breaths. And if she's doing her job and doing what she needs to do, there's no reason why she should get in trouble. And if or get fired, if she's doing her job, ignore them. The thing is, is that they're probably saying that it bothers her and they get satisfaction out of that. So what do you do when that happens? You do the opposite. You just smile and just be a happy person. And then they'll get bored and they'll stop doing it. That's what I told Paloma. Paloma, espero que te ayude eso. Ahí nos avisas. ¿Qué pasó? All right, guys. So we're going to go to the next uh, question from Caitlin. Hi, Tiki's. So I've been a huge fan of yours for the past five years and a huge fan of your mom since I was nine. So I'm like, I'm 23 now. Um, though I'm fully Portuguese and Brazilian, I grew up in the dual immersion program and was immersed in the Mexican culture. So I've always deeply connected with Musica Regional de Mexico. Nice. Uh, my parents and family immigrated to the U.S. from Portugal. And I feel like I identify with the way your mom grew up here, especially in Cali. I'll be at your concert in Fresno. I think it's December 7th. I'm pretty sure. And I hope that it's not weird that I'm not Mexican. I just truly love your music and what you do. I also never got to see your mama in concert. So my mission is to see the beautiful daughter she created. So I was just like wondering what your thought was on that because I always get flack. Everyone's always like, what do you thought? Why are you listening to that music? But I love it. Anyways, on another note, um, I also wanted to ask, I know you went through sexual abuse as a child and I also went through a similar experience. So like, how did you regain your faith in God? I hold a lot of like contempt and fear towards him because of the pain and loss I've experienced. So I was even thinking about hitting up Jackie because she's faith-based too. And I've been really wondering about it because you guys are so spiritual But anyways, thank you for all that you do. And I love you and pray for you always. Oh, Caitlin, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to send me a message. And and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If anything, it's a huge compliment to, to me, to my mother. I'm sure it, it, it would be it is because she's hearing and seeing all of us, you know. Um, so thank you. Thank you for listening to our music. And thank you for going to my concert in Fresno. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get back on stage, you guys. I miss it so much. So I can't wait to hopefully meet you, Caitlin. Um, and yeah, I think it's great. So F whatever other people say. 
you like what you like, girl. Music is universal and it's its own language. So if you feel it in your heart, listen to it. That's what I say. Even if you don't understand certain words, little by little, you will. Anywho, okay, in regards to your other question. Um, well, I, it's kind of hard because I've always just had this supernatural faith that I'm like, I know that there's a higher power and I thank goodness I had a mother that taught me not to victimize myself. She's like, you were a victim, but you don't have to victimize yourself. You don't have to be a victim. This doesn't have to determine who you are in the future. And I thank her so much for that because it's helped me in so many different situations. So I just feel like it happened to me and it's because God knew I would be strong enough to get out of it and that I would be able to help others. Even if you don't have your own podcast or you're not on television, I think like even if you do it in your workplace and you help other people because it happens a lot, unfortunately, so much. And if you could be a voice of strength to other people, um, that I think helped me get through it and, and just know, okay, God, I don't know why it happened. I'm not going to question it. Just the way I can't question why the sky is blue and it's not purple or it's, it is what it is and I can't change it. I can just change my reaction and how I choose to see the future and how I'm not going to allow this to determine who I am meant to be. It takes a lot of mental strength and it's, it's something you have to like a muscle you have to exercise every day to strengthen it more and more and more. Um, but if you sit there and you're like, oh my God, this happened to me. Why me? Like it's, you're just gonna just dig yourself into a deeper hole. So that's why you have to kind of climb yourself out and say, you know what? It happened. It's something that happened to me. It's not who I am. That makes sense. And I just know that God is good. And I, I just, I, that's, I don't even know how to explain it. I've just, I just know that there's a higher power and I just focus on that. And it's helped me with everything in my life. And I said this in, in an episode, I'm only as strong as my faith. So I hope that helps. Um, definitely would love to hear from you again. And we can get a little deeper in this in this conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, but sending you a big hug, Caitlin. And I hope to see you on December 7th. I'm excited. Okay, guys, our final question comes from Giselle. Hi, Cheekies. A very big fan. I love you a lot. I lost my mom at a young age, too. And... I made a similar promise <laughs> to my mom like you did. My last words to her were that um, I'll take care of my sister to the best of my ability and she can go rest. And I made that promise in 2020 and I've kept up with it. My sister was 16 at the time and, you know, she's gotten older, obviously. And my question to you is, <sighs> in those moments of anger, and moments where you and your siblings can't see eye to eye, how do you reassure yourself? I struggle a lot. You know, as my sister has gotten older, sometimes like she'll tell me, you're not my mom, you don't get me. And it's like, I'm trying to, you know, there's no manual on this, on how to learn how to be a guardian, but still be a big sister. Yeah, I just wonder like how how you handle that so gracefully. And I'm all ears for any tips. Again, I love you very much, and I hope you guys are doing good. Oh, Giselle, I get it. I get it. Trust me. <laughs> um, I've had to learn throughout the years that as much as I want to be a second mother and I want to keep my promise to my mom, my siblings have a mind of their own. They have their lives to live, and I have to respect them as human beings. And the way I keep my promise to my mom is I'm there through good times and through bad times. When Johnny was being a crazy little boy and I didn't know what to do, I would just get on my knees and I'd cry and I'd pray. I'm like, give me the strength. Give me the words to guide him because it was very hard. So I think it's just knowing, you know what? They're going to do what they're going to do. I have to let them learn sometimes the hard way. And I just have to be there when and if they need me. And even if they don't, just, hey, I'm here. I'm going to love you through this. I'm going to have your back through this. I'm not always going to agree. I'm going to tell you where I think that you're wrong, but I still love you. And that's all you can really do. That is being there for your sister. That is being there for your sibling. Like, that's all you can do. You can't force anything. You can't force anyone to be something that they're not. And 
life is going to happen and we just have to let it be and pray through it. And now I just leave my siblings to God sometimes. And I'm like, God, you take care of it. Mom, help me. And that's all. And I'm there. And now I've become the big sister. And it's sometimes hard to see. I'm like, oh, they're going to fall on their face. And I know it. But okay, I'll be there. And I'm not going to say I told you so. I'm just going to be like, all right, come on, pick your ass up. So that's all you can do, babe. And I hear it in your voices. I know you were crying and I know this is difficult, but you are doing your best and you are still keeping your promise to your mom, no matter what. So you should be proud of yourself. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This finalizes this episode of Dear Cheekies. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for listening, guys for viewing my podcast. And if you have a question about anything, I will answer with all of my heart with your best interest at heart. Okay? Leave your question at speakpipe.com slash chickies and chill podcast. Los quiero mucho. This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S, For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.